Dennis for catching back up to date. Um, thanks for attending a workshop session. Uh, I wanted to have something for us to talk about at the workshop session, a, a draft of, of, of rules of procedure to follow um, or to, to talk about. Um, as I understand it, the purpose of having the rules of procedure is to have something that we can post for applicants and abutters uh, so that they know what it is that we're going to do and can hold us accountable for following what, how, we, how it is that we're state, we say that we're going to do it. I started with a, um, you know, a recommended set of model policies that the, I'm going to get the name of it, state agency wrong, but it's the OSI is how they put the put their abbreviation at the bottom of the pages. And then I took a stab at making them specific to Rollinsford, and then Sarah and I had a chance to meet uh, and she uh, offered additional guidance to me. So any place that you feel I got it right, credit Sarah. Any place you feel that I got it wrong, for me. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how much, uh, if, if we want to have a long conversation about them, that's great. Um, if, it's, if these are not terribly interesting to people, that I understand why that might be as well. So I thought we could begin with questions and comments, uh, unless you want me to kind of walk through the, what the, what's written down there. I didn't get a chance to look at it. I left recording at 6 o'clock this morning. I didn't log into my email last night. and oh, was unfortunate sorry, call almost late. the whole day. I left my office uh, 20 minutes ago, so... I unfortunately have to admit I did not get the opportunity to look at these. Okay. Although I'm sure that given your reputation for uh, excellent work, I'm sure they're they're great. I'm just not in a position to go to comment on them, you know, not having the opportunity to go okay. through them. Okay, let me start with a quick, quick comment. It's on two and three. It says that the chairperson and vice chairman are elected in, in the month of February. What will happen if there's a bit? Yeah, that was a blank in the in the recommended policies. Um, I went back and forth whether it should be before or after town meeting. Um, I, my understanding was that the select board made its appointments in January, and so I was thinking that that would be the organizational meeting following uh, the you know when any new people came on. Um, we certainly could say that it could be elected annually in the month of February or when there's a vacancy. That'd be good. Okay. Because I feel that we should have some flexibility in the rules to solve. You bet. Can I go to the chair, please? Yeah. Okay. Other questions or comments? One of the changes that we had to make was uh, the, the model rules talk, the model procedural rules talk about having a clerk from as being a member of the board. Uh, and for a long period of time, we've had the good luck to have a recording secretary. So um, as we go through the rules, we should look for places that any places where the word clerk is retained, I tried to substitute um, the term recording secretary. Uh, and I did have a chat with Sarah about how she would prefer to have that position named. Um, uh, and we, we settled on recording secretary. I also expanded uh, what's there in paragraph five to reflect what Sarah traditionally has been doing for us by, by practice. Um, so she works with the chair and the town clerk and other um, members of the town hall staff to get notices and post things, maintain records of attendance, One thing that these uh, rules say kind of silently is that she's going to track our attendance. Um, some boards have a, a roll call at the meeting, uh, and I guess by tradition we haven't had her follow the role. Um, I don't, from, I feel comfortable trusting Sarah to, to take attendance for us, but um, one of the things to point out that this is 
that what I've drafted here is different from what the, what the model rules suggest. Now, are, are you saying that you want to change within this clerk to recording secretary? Except where we mean town clerk. Okay. Um, so 15C um, probably should be recording secretary because it's at the meeting. Okay. And um, 18A um, because that's within the meeting as well. Like this term recording secretary seems like you know like Sarah has more more power than the recording secretary and more responsibility. So because because the recording secretary wouldn't uh, publish notices and postings on that. So um, the only thing is that the clerk, as designated in the original of this document, was a was an elected position. And I am a paid position. Oh, I see. So um, I know what you mean by that, but they I don't know how the. Secretary, so yeah. It's hard for me to see that. Oh, geez, she's not a recording secretary. Yeah. That's only what a happy job. Or? Um, I mean, yeah, technically the recording. I mean, it definitely is more. I'm not just here to record. No, I mean, it really is like. But I don't know how else you would want to. What's your official title? Record. <laughs> Library director. <laughs> no, it's recording. I mean, for the for the planning board and for the ZBA, it's recording secretary. And it's consistent. I mean, we could change it to the board secretary. I mean, maybe that the board would, recording secretary. <coughs> and we would change it to the board recording secretary. Yeah, um, that would you know help to clarify that. Or even like the board just board secretary because then that would be more inclusive of just. More than just recording, like it sort of would say that like, I am the secretary and I have these responsibilities. I don't know. I don't know how. One thing from a practical standpoint that I, I think um, is important is that Sarah has been responsible for getting the notices out and published. And from a legal standpoint, what's really important is that we get it published. And that we post it in the proper places because the one of the ways that people who are unhappy with a decision of the planning board or ZBA uh, can undo it is by saying we didn't properly notify the public or or uh, <coughs> the public of what it is that we're doing. So I feel comfortable having it be a staff person that that really does um, the mechanics of it. Although um, the way Sarah described it to me was she always coordinated with the board chair. So drafts of notices were being approved by somebody on the board. Um, and she was really working, kind of being the glue that held the, the board chair and the town clerk, um, those functions together by making sure things got where they needed to be at the right time. And there are some kind of specific steps to getting things into fosters when there were legal notices, getting things posted up at town hall and run out of the place for 91 a and so forth. So, for what it's worth, my sense is having some staff help to do that well and to do it right is money well spent by the town. I guess that's, but, but I guess that the that the only issue I have is I've been trained not to use the words of the secretary in, in my previous job. So hmm. why so, not? Oh, just as a matter of that's why Sarah and I had a talk about. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's why. Oh. I good. I feel would I feel good. insulted by that kind yes. of policy? No, yeah. I do not care. I mean, some some, <laughs> some people do, and they have, I mean, a valid call on the managerial um, assistant or administrative uh, assistant. Or, oh yes, yeah. administrative assistant. Okay. It, okay. Yeah. I. Yes. Okay. So okay, I'll just shut up. <laughs> no, I I think it's point well taken. I, I wanted to show the maximum amount of respect for what Sarah actually does, which yes. is an important part of. Sonny, we cut you off. Oh, I'm sorry, Sonny. You talked about notices. Mm -hmm. I, I think that whole subject can be revisited because.
because a lot of people don't want to get the bosses. That's actually a dying thing. I mean, faster than what I even realize that I still get it. My mail was delivered to my house. So the number of times that I go to the post office in one year, you can count on one hand. All right? So, I mean, what's left? I'm not going to town hall. Don't tell them I got to go to Disney when I got big money out. It's the last place I want to go. So, I mean, that's the three places, right? Well, we do post it on the town website. Yeah. Well. So those places are actually, that's an RSA. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, in reality, I just gave you good reasons why those are some of the worst. Yeah. No, and a lot of people feel the same as you do, that like that's not an effective way, but the state hasn't changed it, so. And so I'm just, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, if somebody wanted to push the issue, they could almost say that that's not a place that's visited by the majority. Well taken. I think that's one of the reasons why we use the town website, um, which also pushes it out as an email to everybody who subscribes to the town website. Um, but that's bad again too. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but do other municipalities they actually have a poster board that they submit to the applicant that they post on the property, stating that let me hear David. Yeah, I think Portsmouth well. does that. Ron I mean, does. Again, it, it, we're we're driven by statute, Sunny, as far as notice goes. So, I mean, I think if we're checking those boxes. <laughs> what would you suggest for the alternative? I mean, I don't. post it at the transfer station or something. Maybe. You know, I actually think you get because more people down there than you're going to get at the at the at the town hall. If they took the time to. Well, I agree. No. I'm not saying that we actually need to do that by law, <clears throat> but if you really got somebody who really wanted to get an, a, a legal case going, I, you know, yeah, it's posted by law, but we can show the people don't unfair. Well, the um, I don't know if John wants to defend the, the legal profession or not. But, um, the, the way we work is that we comply with what's what's required by the statute, and if we have, we the town has a good argument in court that we the board has properly notified whether or not it's was the best possible way. I agree with what you're saying. Yes, if it was to go to court, yes, you would stand it and stand your ground and be correct. I agree with you. But on the same token, how many people did you really miss? Yeah, and and I think one of the maybe what we agree on, Sonny, is that we'd like to find more ways to have people be aware of and involved in the work that, that's done. And I guess the library, I, don't, I guess Vern is recording us tonight, but there's going to be a system in place to have videos posted of, of town boards and meetings, which is a, another means of access. People still have to go seek it out, but uh, another means of access. I'm happy to write a, an email to the select board you were recommending that they think about another place for posting, such as... I thought that was a great idea, really. Town Transfer Station. I'll be careful to call it the Transfer Station. And that was so don't. <laughs> no, I was careful this time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at a, a bulletin board in front of me. It says Town News. I mean, is it posted there? Yeah. So, post I, mean, that's, there. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty universal. People, if they're really interested in what's going on, they can come there. They don't have like this, is, this is the first time I've been here so that since I've been in this town. I've been in this town now 40, 40 years. First time you've been here? First this place time. is fabulous. And I wouldn't have been here other than they called the meeting down That's here. Just, that's why we call the town meeting here. So it's directly affected our getting the library. I didn't even know where to go. I called for him down here, and then I saw. <laughs> Sonny, one of the things, just to be clear about it, um, the statutes have ways of providing direct, actual notice to abutters. I agree. You're going to also have your signed, certified copies of the, that the mail was delivered. Yeah. So we do we do try to get it right, um, and let's keep maybe looking at it. Other questions or comments about the draft rules? <coughs> I did go through and made the substitution for board secretary for recording secretary. I have a couple of questions for him, Charlie. Sure. So, 11 through 13, you talk about disqualification, and actually, intend to. 
you use the term disqualify in certain cases and you use the word recuse in certain places. Those are different, um, those are different meanings. And I think that um, it needs to be consistent, you know, what the definition, or what, I just want to agree that it needs to be consistent as to, um, it seems, you know, for instance, in 12, you talk about a decision to recuse, which I think is followed up on 11, which talks about disqualification and not recusal. So, um, as I understand disqualification, that must mean it's ineligible. For instance, you're disqualified from holding office, you're ineligible. Recuse would be more in the lines of you have a pre existing uh, opinion that's a reason why you should not hear the thing. So, that's, that's one um, question I have. Um, and I'll just shoot out my ideas, you can tackle all you want. One of the things that I find is a little discouraging as a member of the, the zoning board and of the, of the planning board is that applicants, um, in the, we're volunteer boards, yeah. and I think there should be some deadline for applicants to submit notices and, and, and materials because, you know, we all just oh, don't have the board for the meeting. Right, and I think that, that there should be a cutoff date, um, and I don't know if, if that would be the rules of procedure, but I think that, that that's... Um, an important issue not to just, you know, have someone submit something 24 hours before and expect us all to have the opportunity to review it. Do you know what paragraph you're looking at there? You know what? I, I don't know if there is a paragraph. That's why I'm bringing oh, it up. Because okay. I, I don't in know. The, in the guidelines, in, in the guidebook, there it, it spells that out, as does the planning board version of this. So it, it does, there are RSAs that say they have to, they you have to give them 20 days, it's 20 days for planning board and it's 10. All right. So I think, by and large, that has not been enforced um, on the various boards. Um, um, planning board, yes, just because it's a matter of noticing. You need that much time to notice. So planning board actually does. We kind of we do do that. So the, I guess this is the, the issue, Sarah. Maybe it may, and I don't want to jump on anyone. Is that I think sometimes, and, and even chairman or chairpersons are busy. It doesn't get distributed to the individual members until the night before or the night of. And that's like sometimes... Well, that's not an implied criticism. It's that's not. With, with planning, yeah. that's like a whole... We could discuss that. That's oh, okay, a whole so, other procedural thing that just had... And, and maybe that's more than I'm getting yeah. at. So I, mean, I have this impression that the board's not getting stuff because sometimes I'm not getting stuff until um, the day before. And I find, time, I, I find it hard sometimes to find the time to review it. Yeah. yeah. So with, with zoning specifically, so I always send out the applications to everybody. I mean, zoning happens consistently, planning, that's a whole other kettle of fish. But um, when I send out notices, so you get the applications within the 10-day window, the same as the abutters. The, the, window, the window is small for ZBA. Okay. I mean, they, they, you can call a meeting within 10 days, so by the time you, you don't have a lot of advanced time a lot of the time. Okay. And I think that you have to call, if I'm pulling this from memory, so I could be wrong, but I think you have to schedule a, a hearing within 30 days of the application being submitted. Sure, right. Uh, okay. Right. Not, so you know, not more... earlier than 10 days and not later than 30 days. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through and shoot out some other notes here, if you don't mind. Just a second. Um, I'm, gonna, okay. I'm catching up with you on disqualification and recusal. Mm -hmm. And what I suggest there, John, I think it's I think it's a very good point. So disqualification is, Sonny, you think that, um, say, my mother-in-law comes in to ask for a petition. And you know that if my mother-in-law dies, I might inherit from my mother-in-law through my wife. And you might say... Charlie, I think you've got a conflict of interest. And I might say, oh, no, I can hear my mother-in-law's application. And the board, you could make a motion. I vote to disqualify Charlie from hearing that application. And the board can vote on that. And I think it's, it's an important power of the board to police itself to say, Charlie, I don't think you can sit on that, on that case. Recusal would be my mother-in-law files an application. And I say, you know what, I should step I should step down. It's not right for me to hear that to hear that application, uh, and 12 is intended to guide that process. Um, 
It's not though, it, and John, here's where it gets a little bit, um, a little bit dicey. I think if you, uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a silent investor in, in one of, in an applicant's, um, um, in an applicant's property, or um, ah, that would be a fraud. I'm trying to think of something that would come closer to the line. I think that the board could use 12A through 12G to help guide its decision on a vote to disqualify. Um, but I think, I, I agree with, John makes a good point that disqualification is an authority that the board has to say to one of us, you can't sit on the case and we need, a, we need to get an alternate. Recusal is a decision that one of us makes for ourselves and say we stand up and, and don't want to, don't do that. Does that so, so following up on that then, um, your last sentence of disqualification says the vote is advisory and non-binding. <laughs> so... Um, That's interesting, yeah. And, and let me, so, and I'm a little bit, and I must think it should be that way, Charlie, because, and I'm still, and I'm not criticizing you of not making a, a great explanation. I would like, I did not get a chance to look at RSA 7314 or 508.12 is, um, you know, I, I want to understand a little bit better the differences between the two. Um, Fair enough, yeah. So, but, I think it's saying that we, we have um, recognized, we as a board have recognized that you should be disqualified. Mm -hmm. But it's all, also recognizing that um, it's, not, it's not something that we have the authority to enforce. So, right, I, I think so that's why I sort of like the, the language means, to tell you the truth. Well, that means that if, um, if something, if, we, if he doesn't recuse himself automatically after we've disqualified him, he continues to vote on that. And the person that brought the petition to us wasn't satisfied with the outcome, then they can go back to us and say, "Look, the board even told you you should disqualify yourself." Okay, yeah, it may, I so, think it may be advisory to to that board member, but then it becomes part of the grounds for rehearing or ultimately exactly. for Exactly. So I think board. it has to stay there for that reason. Say it's, you're saying you think it has to stay advisory and not binding. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm yeah. inclined to like it that way. Okay. To think that way, also. Oh, I, thought, I was thinking you wanted to take that out. No, no, no I was just, I think I was just going out for Charlie because I thought I heard him say it was binding. Yeah, I was making this. And, just, yeah, I was saying that the, the yeah. language, of the paragraph doesn't say that. So I haven't really sense. met your 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 concern, John, that disqualification ought to be different from recusal. Um, well, what I'm saying is, I I just um, I just want to make sure that the, the documents. Internally consistent, and that's not by no means a criticism of you because I haven't done my homework and reviewed all this as well as I would have liked. So it's chances are it's, it's done extremely well and incorrectly. It's just something that I, I noted when yep. going through it. Let's see, let's move on. And Sorry, yeah. while well, you're right there, I think, I think the word uh, disqualified should be completely gone away from hmm. the reason being. The history from the past, which and this happened to me while I was still on the board here. Mm -hmm. Back when Bruce Morgan brought a case in front of the board, mm -hmm. I suggested that I lose myself because I know Bruce. I saw all the plans before the meeting. I mean, his place is right next to where I work. And Joe looked at me and he says, I told him, I said, I know. Him. Son, you've been in this town long enough. You know everybody in this town. It's a small town. Mm -hmm. Knowing somebody is not reason. Right. Knowing somebody is not the reason, right? He says, do you have any monetary gains whether this goes or does not go? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Yeah. You have no look, family relationship. Right. So then he looks at Bruce and he says, Bruce, what do you think? He says, I don't care how he votes, if he even votes. So, you know, I mean, basically what I said is being a small town, this is not a big city where, you know, you got an elected board. Mm -hmm. um, so, as it was, it was it was a clear cut across the board. My vote wouldn't have mattered other than mm -hmm. the second one that came up was with C and J. Mm -hmm. Now I did recluse myself and said I wouldn't vote only because I work for That's your employer, yeah. And that was cut and dry. Mm -hmm. But I didn't need to disqualify myself because there was nothing to I they, I just didn't want to vote on that particular item because it wouldn't could have possibly had an impact. Okay. So I think that's, you know, where those two have been like things that I've gone through. Okay. okay. One that really, 
I don't I don't understand is uh, told by to assist the member in determining whether or not they should just uh, step down has directly or indirectly given an opinion or formed an opinion. Mm -hmm. What's what's the definition of opinion? See? Is that yeah, you know that one doesn't make any any sense to me because if, if you do your work mm -hmm. and that leads you to a series of steps, you know, and so you can ask the applicant a couple, uh, couple questions. Yeah. Okay, is that an opinion? Uh, so you, yeah. So the the idea of opinion there is that's that's a vague term to me in a legal sense. <laughs> you, you're all making very well, fair, very fair, uh, you know, questions and arguments. Here's the distinction that I draw, Paul: is the purpose of a, of the hearing that this board holds is to take evidence and argument from the applicant and from abutters or or other interested parties. And to some degree, we have to have an open mind about the outcome, yeah. um, in order to honor the due process rights of both the applicants and the abutters or anybody else that comes in to, to present evidence and argument to the board. So I think what they mean by opinion there is a final opinion that you can't be shaken from. In other words, if you prejudge oh. the case. Yes. Um, similarly, I think they worry um, uh, if Sonny is an attorney and he's an attorney for the applicant. I know how much I like attorneys, Sonny. So. You but you're an attorney for the applicant. Went along with that time. Time make money. And, and, and you know, every Thursday night we golf together, and he has he has persuaded me while we were out golfing that, that you know how how the board really ought to decide this case. Um, that that would be forming an opinion that the other party can't really doesn't have a fair means of attacking or you know um, undoing. So I think what they mean is forming a prejudicial opinion um, that will interfere with their ability to decide uh, the case before them. But I agree with you that it could be more clearly stated. Um, uh, and it's not, it's, you could have an opinion coming into the hearing. I've read the documents and I don't think they meet the requirement for hardship. Or I've read the documents and I think it's clear that they should, you know, it looks like they're going to prevail. Um, doesn't mean that you wouldn't, you wouldn't or couldn't think through what's before you ahead of time and have some questions in mind based on the opinions that you have. And the important thing is for the board to always ask questions so to get all the facts. That, that, that can help the applicant or it can hurt it. But that's, that's the process, right? Yeah. Well, and the other, the first part of that is um, if I've said ahead of time, oh, I think this is an, I've said to the applicant, oh, this is a no-brainer. There's no way that you possibly can win this. Oh. Um, or I've said to the abutters, this is a no-brainer. There's no way you can possibly win it. Um, the, the, the purpose of having, um, I don't like to overemphasize the quasi-judicial nature of it, but we're supposed to have open minds and give the people who come before us for a hearing a fair shake. Um, so that's, that's part of what I think D is it? C is no D is is asking us to do. Okay. Anybody have any ideas how to fix it? Something to think about. You know, it's a, it's a board of adjustments being taken to superior court by the residents of Rochester. Uh, Did you see that in the paper? No. Yeah. Over that salt tower. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it the intent, Charlie, to, I mean, I guess this is a workshop, the intent isn't to, the rules, these would have to be adopted at the next meeting and not meant to be in final version, so we could have an opportunity to comment in the meantime, or is, it, or is that a public meeting that we comment in the meantime? No, I think we can, we can have them as a um, um, draft and then vote on them. I don't, I don't think this is subject to the adoption of the rules of procedure. Keep going back and forth on that. Do we have to have a public hearing 
No, it says you're not making any. It's it's not it's not like an ordinance change or something like that. This so it's is, just this is basically we have to do it in a yeah. in properly noticed meeting. Yes. Yeah. So we have to do it at a properly but, noticed. But not meeting. as like. On 13, Charlie, when you talk about should 13, so 13 just talks about disqualification and not recusal. So, mm -hmm. um, and you say that a member who is disqualified. Him or herself. Him yeah. or herself. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I question is, has to exit the meeting room. I can understand I'm leaving the table, but in other words, a disqualified member couldn't sit in the audience as a member of the public at that point? Of course you could. With that? Of course you could. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, the, 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 the proposal said. here is not what it says. Yeah. At a public meeting, he is a resident of that community, is entitled to go. There's no legal rule that says he can't be there. And, and in other places in here, they talk about um, like an alternate participating in the hearing, but then leaving the table when the board goes into, goes into deliberations. I, so let me tell you what I think they were getting at, but, but this board... I mean, the reason we're having this conversation is so you can say what you want in the in those blasted procedural rules. I think the idea is that, John, if you say I'm disqualified and you sit in the room, we're going to go, oh, he's disqualified. We know what he wants us to do, so we must do what John wants us to do anyway. That somehow your presence in the room would mm -hmm. sway us. But if we go back to this, this is a potential juror, maybe asked. So that's kind of like talking about jury and, and not really specifically to a board. So I don't see any reason why we can't remove that last paragraph because it's it does refer specifically in the RSA to a potential juror. And I would see why they wouldn't want a juror in the room, but I can't imagine a board member. I think a juror can a recused juror could stay in the room. But a disqualified Sure. Yeah, because it's a public trial. Yeah. Uh, that's Sonny's uh, point. The ju the juror couldn't go back into the uh, deliberation room yeah. uh, with the with the, and couldn't that, sit in the jury box. But number twelve, where it refers to a juror, that has to be something. Yeah, that's the additional to that. Yep, yeah, that was the that's the standard. You know, those are the questions that the judges ask jurors. Um, so in regards to that, I think that's why that paragraph was there because it referred to a juror. So I don't see any reason why we can't remove that. Yeah, we could remove either all that entire paragraph or that last sentence. <coughs> so what would what would it take to stop a member to say, you know, I, I, need, I need to step away from the board while the meeting's ongoing, and they want they want to address the board because both one, he's a resident and he is a member. Yeah. And I've seen that happen in the past. You know, I mean. He would start his position on the board at that point and then go address the board and the public that's there. Yeah, and John, following your both of your your thinking on this, the, the board member doesn't give up his or her First Amendment right to address the public body. You know, if, if the if that disqualified or recused member says, I, I really want the board to know what I think about this, I think you've got a First Amendment right and we have an obligation not to be unduly swayed just because it's a member of the board that's addressing us. And you know, it may have, that member may have also tried to recluse himself, and the rest of them said, that's not a reason I'm <coughs> the Then he want to address you, mm -hmm. the board, and the public. Yeah. The, the other thing that I see a little bit troublesome about, about 12, Charlie, is, for instance, as with the planning board, I've seen uh, Sunday, I can recall, came in and asked a question of the planning board that he wanted to know for the purposes of um, just his general information, right? So if then Sonny comes in front of the planning board as a member of the public and asks a question, he's, and, he, and then and he doesn't advance uh, an opinion as to whether or not something can happen, he just comes in and asks a question, and then he comes in and, sits, and, and is on the board, this board, um, I would want, I think you should be allowed, that someone has a, a right to attend as a public member. Mm -hmm. And ask a question. And, and that doesn't become a disqualification, a disqualified factor. And, you know, that I has, you know, indirectly formed an opinion or, uh, I, I don't know, I, I see, I think that should be permitted, um, that, 
members of the, of the board could appear as a member of the public someplace else, and, and as long as they don't prejudge a case, um, that you know, educating yourself about other town matters should not be <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm kind of new to this, so let me just get, make sure I get this straight in my head. You're sitting on the board, but you want to leave the board, become a member of the public, and ask a question of the board? Could do that. What, why wouldn't you just ask us while you're here? I mean, I don't get why you would want to do that. I mean, well, I'm not having I think that I think you'd want to ask it as being a resident rather than a board member. I've already asked, I know what the question I'm going to ask you. So if you folks are sitting on the board, you've got no clue what I'm going to, what, I, what information I may put out. And it may very well sway how you think, for whatever reason. But that wouldn't be as, as we're deliberating? Well, we're going to get into deliberating a little bit further. Uh, at that point, maybe we can bring it in then, because we always deliberated with the public in session right there. And we wouldn't ask those questions of each other while we're sitting here. Well, also, but, he would he would close the public, public hearing, public comment, yeah. and then we would go and vote. At that point, anything that you want that I want to say to John, you know, everybody else is going to hear. Well, wouldn't they hear as a member of the public? Like if you stood, yeah, I, I'm confused as to what 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 that process would be. You're leaving this board, this table, and you're going and becoming a member of the public. That's happening. What's the difference between that and you sitting here asking us? I saw that happen as town moderator. The town moderator asked to be relieved, had somebody come up and take his place. Mm -hmm. He came down and then asked a question. Now he's just a member of the public. Asked a question, got his answer, went back and being town moderator. So, so I think, Deanna, the difference would be um, in those cases where somebody recuses or is disqualified, and we'll sort out yeah. how, we, how we mean that to be, the, the board member might want to ask us a question, um, how, can, how can you find that there's unnecessary hardship in this case, or um, uh, uh, on... Uh, on what basis would you be able to find that the, that the applicant has satisfied the standard for special exception? I think as a member of the public, the, that board member could try to direct our attention to, to what the board member feels is a relevant and controlling fact or a relevant and controlling legal principle. Um, it, they could do the same thing if they were going to vote on it as well. But I think it's it, it's more they would take that step of becoming a member of the public if they were not planning to vote if they recused and said I'm not going to vote. On if they recused, okay, then I understand that. Thank you. Okay, this is just an internal document, correct? Yeah. This is just for us, so yeah. we know it'll be public. It'll be okay, public. Yeah. yeah. But I I think my key from reading number twelve is it these the directors are to assist us in determining whether or not it would be appropriate. To recuse ourselves, and right. you know we're not jurors, but you know there are no questions that a ZBA member asks themselves. I mean, it's so I, that's what my reading of this is: is we as a, ma a member, this just gives us some guidance as to whether or not we should stay or, or you know or go, go or not vote. So, yep. um. just a quick aside while we're right here, an yep. eleven. Um, Right after RSA, it says he, and I think it should be he slash she. Uh, probably did, um, because in the 13, it's himself herself. So. This is in 11? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would assume we yeah. want to have it be gender neutral as much as we can. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Inclusive. Yep. Oh, the first time himself or herself. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That was already there. It was just he. No, we want to make it inclusive. Can I ask about number 15 applications just for consistency? So number C says that the clerk shall present the board applications received at least seven days and not ten days. Right, so this I think this is more something that happens 
would boards meet regularly and get, um, are regularly getting applications in bigger towns like Dover or Rye or Portsmouth. So in those towns, the, the ZBA meets once to twice a month. Okay. And the process is different. Like they may just vote to accept an application um, and then at the meeting, it gets an assi it assigned a hearing date, and then it would get noticed. With our board, because, I mean, we're dealing with, like, max, I mean, four cases a year? You know, how many, how many have you seen in a year at the most? Probably eight. Yeah. yeah one or two years, it was pretty heavy. Yeah. So in the years that I've been with the board, there have been two to four. So... I think this is not likely. Yeah. So, so we're not presented with anything at the meeting then. We no, always have it ahead yeah. of the meeting. Yeah, because okay. um, we actually have to call a meeting date in order to have a meeting. Right. Because there's no set date. Should it be stricken then if it's not applicable? Probably. We could do it. I mean, it's possible that we would have noticed we've gone through the steps to pull the board together for a public hearing. And we would have received an additional application while we were waiting to have that meeting, but it wouldn't. You could let us know at that. Yeah, at and that you could uh, you could present it as at new business. Yep, yeah, at new business would be fine. Yeah. Charlie, does the second half of fifteen B does that compare to the language of the statute, or when such decision becomes known or reasonably could have been known by the petitioner and determined by the board? I think that is yeah. I didn't, I can't say that I went back and took a look at the statute, but no, I can try to do that. But I know that there's... There's a phrase written for attorneys, I have to say. Well, and fertile, I, fertile ground for argument there. <laughs> well, I, and this you can all, imagine that there all are all kinds, of, <laughs> all kinds of times when, when, how, what starts that 30 days running or what starts that, that time period running? Um, is it when Sarah puts the note, the opinion in the mail, or is it when we took the vote, or is it when the the applicant receives the letter and opens the letter? So what happens if the applicant was taking a vacation to Aruba and just got home after two weeks? And so, um, so I think that's probably why that language is there. One of the things about public hearings, and maybe what I'll do is do another draft. Um, I, John's point is well taken that, it, it, that we're asking an awful lot of a volunteer board. Um, sometimes these zoning things are complex. Sometimes, I don't know how, how much paperwork you get with some of them, but there's often, you have to look at a couple of different zoning ordinances and some schedules <coughs> and a plan, um, and, and to just kind of dump that on us um, without kind of reminding the parties. So I'm thinking in a butter letter. If a butter wants to show up the night of the hearing with a letter, I don't want to say, we, sure. won't, we won't take your letter. Right, right. I hear you with that. Yep, sure. on, on the other hand, and I'll pick on Sonny's high-priced lawyers again, but you know we have these high-priced lawyers who, who kind of drop some an additional packet. <laughs> That's why I said high-priced, because Chad and I are reasonably priced. That's right. Uh, but you Excuse know, me, mid price then how's yeah. that? <laughs> uh, but anyway, but you know, you can imagine that people would drop a fair amount of information on us shortly before the hearing, and we'd like to discourage that. Um, <coughs> so we draft. Okay. Um, if anybody has any good thoughts about how we might, I don't know how much we can make it stick. Um, it, it's happened that we've actually received. Uh, during the, the hearing. Meeting. Yeah. But if uh, it's cumbersome like that, do we have the ability to recess? Right. For time certain and then come back? Well, what it is, the, the, we'll say the abutter, as you used. Well, yeah, we've got a signed document here that we don't mind them doing what they want to do. And that actually happened. Yep. Yeah. Ah, right up on Rollins Road. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The abutter was right there with the applicant. And <coughs> we got something here all signed. The big thing is, this was going to affect their property value, mm -hmm. even though it didn't go on their property, but because we didn't have the yeah, I 
can imagine. So that illuminated that question because that's one of my favorite questions. You know, I'll ask you about it. You, you have an issue with this where it may affect your property value. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I said, so no, we got a letter here saying we don't want it. So we accepted the letter and put it in. To the record. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. It's, it's usually momentary. And <coughs> Recess. If it's something really that we feel that we need to, to do a little more investigation on, then we can. I mean, I think that with the uh, the, the other op option is to continue it to late date. We've done a continuance. You know, yeah. we, it, because sometimes you just don't have enough time to reasonably well, that's uh, I said, look at it. Time certain, so that they could, we could get it. You know, right. applicants can request to continue, can't they? Mm -hmm. They want to. Wanted to get more information to us, they could request it. And boards are sometimes, the planning board, and I don't think it's the time on the zoning board, can request a continuance so they can get a legal opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that has to be in here, but I don't know if. But I know that the that's other thing, too, you might want to consider if you're going to do something like that, add on our engineering opinion. I mean, if somebody's come in with something that doesn't meet zoning, uh, I don't think any of us are here prepared to make an engineering judgment. Mm -hmm. Right. What, like uh, Blue Ones, I asked a question about the bias suppression system. We're never going to ask. Interestingly enough on that, not to go off, off, off too much off topic, and I'll just phrase this generally, is that there have been instances where public officials have been asked to attend hearings to give, provide input, and they don't. And subsequently that, that town entity or subdivision <coughs> said, we've got a problem with something that's been approved by the planning board. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, don't think we to, I don't think we're going to have a subpoenaing our, our fellow departments, but, but that is an issue that comes up. Well, I'll bring up another one. You bring that, look at that hammerhead that's down on the end of uh, Scotland Landing? Huh? Landing? Landing? Scout Landing. Yeah. Okay. Who in their right mind, not even being a, a non-engineering background, who would put a hammerhead at the end of a road to anticipate to turn commercial vehicles around? Ridiculous. Hands down. Yeah, but what does that get to do with the zoning board? It's the planning board, right? Mm -hmm. I guess that's true, yes. The point about that's more of a planning board issue than a zoning board. Yeah, the same thing with the with See, with some the of the suppression, so the zoning board should should not get into the planning board details on it. Yeah. Excellent point. Okay. Other questions, comments. This is this is all great stuff because the more of these questions that we can figure out ahead of time, how we want to be clear with the public and applicants and of others and so forth. Better off we do, are. do we also have a backup attorney or someone who we can call for legal advice? Other than, we'll say, the, the town attorney? Yep. That's good. Who do we have, by the way? I think it's John Radigan. Okay, so he can do both the planning and zoning board, which is fine with me. I believe so. Uh, he's, he, he, he's gave some great, great opinions, so that's fantastic. So, that's fantastic. Um, I was going to talk about training once we got through the, through the draft of the Rules. Um, I did talk to John today about seeing okay. if we could get some, some training. So. Um, other questions or comments about the rules? First, Joe, I want to, if I can interrupt yeah. again, I want to compliment you on M on page uh, four. Uh, all testimonies should be presented an oath or affirmation. Um, I think there has been, um, I, I've been to my chagrin. Things have been represented in the past by a certain boards that have been less than accurate, shall we say. So I, I, re I really like that um, uh, inclusion of that phrase. Um, in terms of the general deliberations, and I know that, uh, Paul, you brought this up before, is I have seen other zoning boards vote on the factors individually. And I don't know if it's your intent, do we want to address that? 
you know, the um, in the public interest hardship, or do we just vote as we feel at the end? And I don't know if that has any implications for you know the ZBA defending its opinions should should has should lots of implications for the ZBA being able to defend so, its opinion. So I think that that's an important process that needs to be. So you know how um, the and I don't I'm, I'm ashamed to say I don't know the factors off top of my head that to grant for instance um, an exception you've got to meet one of five factors. <coughs> and what I've seen other boards do this is going back a long, long time ago is literally the chairman will say okay on the factor of X how do you vote and each member goes through and says you know yay or nay and, and perhaps gives some explanation why. And goes through each factor instead of just going up or down uh, on the application. On the application. Okay. And um, you know, I, I don't. I, my, it's my belief that probably doing it the former matter, the former way, where you vote on individual factors, makes an opinion more defensible in the Superior Court. But I could be wrong about that, Charlie. I, my impression, and some of you. Of the OSI manual, yes, because I think the I think the OSI manual has a recommendation on that, uh, including a worksheet, a proposed worksheet. Um, the, the OSI manual suggests that the chair is keeping a worksheet as the public hearing is going on and as deliberations are going on, so that the chair can summarize for the board the the outlines of the information that's been presented, and then uh, say on a petition for variance. That's really where it comes up. Right. Yeah, it's really close. Yeah. Right. Um, um, so it's what um, unnecessary hardship, no diminishment of property value of a butter's property values in the public interest. Public, in the public interest, there's a I think there's a fourth or a fifth, but it's, it's five total. Yeah. 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 No, so the what John is asking uh, is, be. would we vote on the petition for variance, yes or no, or would I? Say okay on the question of diminishment of property values to abutters. How do you vote? And we go around um, on the question of unnecessary hardship. How do we vote? And we go around uh, and so forth. Uh, my my strong preference is to do it that way. Is to have us make a finding on each one of the each one of the factors so that it's clear if if either side wants to take us to court, it's clear what we decided. And I think, so Sonny, you might find that it doesn't diminish, pro uh, that it does diminish property values, but four other members of the board, that it does not. Mm -hmm. The board would approve on that subject. That's right? a four to one vote that, 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 yep. that would carry. But then uh, you find, and I'm picking on you tonight, okay. but, but, but you would find, say you might find that it um, uh, does meet the unnecessary hardship standard and four other members of the board say it does not meet the standard, that then the petition would fail based on that. Um, so it's possible that, I, as I understand it, That's we might disagree within ourselves about you know how a particular factor weighs into it, but then there's a clear record of the board's action. So would there be like, would there be like a minority report for the decision on the four of the people that, and then a minority? Could we actually do a minority report as part of it? I think so. Okay. I think so. And that would be up to the person individually whether or not they wanted to submit their own opinion. Okay, yeah. but the board would. Okay. And, and if I'm memorializing it for the, the board, I'm, I'm happy to say, you know, Member Foss believed that there was hardship because. I mean, I don't see that there's any, any harm to us. Well, Member Foss wanted to make his own yeah. report. Okay. There again, it's each one of us is going to end up with our own judgmental opinion based on what you've heard, right. what has been said. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Uh, Cumberland Farms, before we got time. Five variances. Each one was voted separately. And they are actually built right on the property line in the back. I mean, right on, they can't even work in that building without being on somebody else's property. And the guy that owned it looked up on top of the hill. And I asked him, I think three times, do you 
understand what's going to happen. And everybody in the board, you know, they're all watching to see how he's reacting. You want to be sure, give the guy an understanding, you know, the break that what you're committing to may be more than what you realize. The second one was sign size. There was a couple, out of the five, I voted down two. But that was just me. Yeah. I mean, I get overridden. That's like, uh, that's like Bloom's. I voted that down. I get overridden. Okay. All right. So I'll add to 20, and we'll, we'll try to clarify that process a little bit. Um, um, can we go back to 18A and B? Mm -hmm. So just, uh, so just in a practical way, the, the way the meetings have been done is the, the chair has called the hearing in session and then read the application. And then Joe had me read, he didn't have me, he just had me read who was the letters that were noticed. So I don't know if, I mean, I'm happy to read the application, but he did that in the past. I don't know how you want to, because this is, this is calling for something different. Um, I think it's, as I remember, planning board hearings, it was important to put on the record the, that notice was from who the abutters were and that we had receipts yes. for each one of them. So I, yeah. I think um, does the board have a, an opinion about who does the reading? Do you want to read the application? I mean, Joe kind of did. Joe kind of did a preamble where he read the application and kind of talked about the ordinances uh, that were at question there. Um, happy to do it. Okay. And then. This was something different from the model rule, so I'll, and I'll tell you where it came from. I'm happy to do it any way the board wants to have it done. Um, the, the model rule suggests that the questions come to the chair, and I think the purpose of that rule is to prevent crosstalk, um, so that, that the applicant and the abutters don't start just talking to each other. Um, the, uh, in conduct hearings at the university, we have the parties write down their questions. Um, the reason we do that is so that we can be sure that we're asking the question that the parties had um, and that we're not, in, in hearing the question, aren't reframing it, uh, and that we also provide encouragement for people to think through that what their question is. Um, if I'm sensing the concern, the concern might be that somebody might not want, either might not want to write down a question or might feel intimidated about writing down a question. Um, and certainly my intention is not to cut down on the partic public participation uh, or the participation of the parties to kind of test each other out with questions. So um, I'm open to other ways of doing it. I, I'm just a little worried that my hearing is no longer very, as good as it was, I guess. Um, so I'm worried about mishearing a question or having to ask somebody to restate the question four times or, so that was, that was where I came from. We're okay? No, I don't like that. Don't like it? No. All right. Not there. I think the reason B 
being is the question that she may ask would spur something more that he's trying to dig into, and that would be, put something to me. I mean, the board, and anybody that's been there will tell you, I mean, the questions, you don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And pretty much they're taking their turn, you know. And Mr. Chairman, I have, I have a couple of questions, but that's after the public. After you present the case and the, the applicant spills his or her means out there, yep. and then you let the public speak, usually this whole time, I mean, people were just, we are taking notes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then, it, then it comes our turn. To ask questions. Right. Yep. And at what point that he brought up, I, I really think we do a piece of the planning board. you agree with that? Well, I'm not sure so, what you mean, honestly. I'm yeah, not sure the, the board members don't have to submit their questions in writing. It's only for the, uh, the applicant and the abutter that would have to submit their questions. the general public? Well, okay, yeah, and members of the general public. All right, usually there are not that many there. Okay. Uh, I think that in that small room, people getting up and down are going to distract more. Okay. Because if, we'll say you're the, you're the applicant, and he's your engineer, and he's presenting, or your attorney, yep. right? You've got this big postal board. Now you've got John Q. Citizen coming up. He's got a question. He's going to either try to get it to Sarah or yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, I, I think the only which happens is they raise their hand, have to give their name and address. <coughs> yeah, I'd like to know they why. Would, they would be asking the question through the chair. To the to the chair, right. yeah. not, not to, to, not the, to the applicant exactly. directly. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, the, so the but only piece is, of that, that that Paul and I were debating was whether or not the question should be written down and handed to the chair, that is whether it should be put put to the person by writing it down rather than just speaking it. I'm, I'm comfortable either way. The, if they just had a question if they really asked, were asking a question of the person that was there, rather than if they came up and asked a question of the board because the person that was the applicant um, had said something that they didn't agree with, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But if they wanted to ask the person directly and avoid the board, then that's when you want it written down, right? Yeah. So. If they weren't really addressed, didn't want to address the board with a the question, they wanted to address the applicant. That's when you're asking them to write it down. Yeah, well, I've seen that, but yet we'll still go through the board because what will happen is the citizen will say, Do you they have any intentions to do any work on that street as a result of this applicant? But then he would say, instead, instead well, of. No, then the question would roll over from would, him to the applicant. Yeah. You know what? what is your intentions? take it out and we'll try it and if we need to change it if we find that my hearing is so defective that I make an ash out of the questions well. in my hearing is to mention too Charlie the, the I mean one thing is is, is for that we invest in a microphone you know and the, the other is yeah. for the purposes some of these hearings have large turnouts and if you had to write everything down it could really elongate the hearing okay I think so that's my other yeah. concern you know you have you have you know, a lot of public interest in something that'll really. The, the biggest one I saw down there is when that condo project came in. The room was full, the hallway was full, and people are trying to get around the doorways because they at least wanted to hear. And in that case, yeah. I mean, they asked you, what we should have gotten in is, no, we're going to have to stop this meeting and go to a larger facility. Mm -hmm. That probably would have been the proper thing to do so that anybody could at least listen. I mean, the alternative, Charlie, is that you could have a provision that upon, you know, motion of the, the board or something, you could let it convert to a plate in writing, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, That's a good idea, because if it's, that, if it's that big and people can't get in, at least they can get their question in through the people standing in the doorway. I mean... Yeah. I, I've taken it out, and let's... Hmm? let's Go with it for a while. See what we want to see if we need to make any difference, any changes. All right. Charlie, just the deliberations. What I don't see in the um, public hearing is, and maybe I'm missing this in front of my eyes. Where does it then say 
that the deliberation happens in A through O. Yeah. You really, it comes between N and O, doesn't it? And you want to close the hearing and you want to ask for deliberation. Right, right. Let me add something in. And honestly, one of the things I want to go back to the manual and try to understand better is how, how, can, you, how can you deliberate and deliberate in public and then have a written decision? Right, or even how it says in, in N, how you're supposed to do a, a summary of, of the facts at the hearing yeah. and for each side. I mean, that seems to me very onerous. There are some forms. Um, there are some forms that OSI has recommended, uh, but yeah, I don't. I, I do get the sense that the chairperson's job is to listen more than to speak. And so I'll try to do a, I'll try to let you guys do the main, the main work of talking, you know, and listening and asking questions. And I'll try to mostly be listening and working with Sarah to ask, you know, to, to be ready to summarize. So, you know, do I interpret to be that we, the board, <coughs> I go in the back, back uh, swapping information back and forth uh, during the deliberation and say, John, you know, I think that that, uh, that item that they want, it's just, it don't hold no ground. I mean, is that what we got? Is that what you Aren't we legally obligated to yeah, do that? I, right? I think that's an, I would be, we, I don't think I've ever seen that done. How did, you, how did we do it before? I think it was all, you better be ready when, when, when he decides to, when he, when he closes it. I mean, you had a chance to ask all your questions. Yeah. All right. You've got all your, you should have your, your head screwed on straight, and you should be ready to vote. Okay. I can help us. Huh? I need time to think about, I need time to absorb what I've just heard. Well, you, better, you better hurry up and be quick, because at that time, the then he's going to go around the board, and whether he starts there or here, then how do you vote, yes or no? Yeah, but how do you be open-minded without the Discussion. 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 Deliberation. Yeah. Because I learned something, it, you know, every time I attend a zoning board meeting. Well, I'm not going to disagree with you. But there again, how are you going to deliberate it with the public, especially if the applicant and the attorney is right there? I mean, I just painted the worst case scenario right there. Yeah, yeah but attorneys are not perfect. The attorneys are paid to represent the clients. He's listening to everything you said. Yes. But the attorneys do not tell you all the facts. They, they don't have to. Right, correct? Do we have to make a decision that night? Yes. Well, yes. unless we continue it. Unless we continue it. And I guess one of the things when I spoke to John hey, Rabbit today, um, I don't want, I, 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 I keep to teasing people. you with the idea of some training, but um, I, 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 several of us have expressed a need to get some training. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think with the exception of you two, we're, we're all pretty new. So you're right in fire. Um, That's just how it's done. And um, so Sarah and I had a conversation about it, and I approached John Radigan, who had done some training for the planning board. Um, and uh, John indicated he'd have to charge us, charge the town to come and meet with sure. us. But he's willing to provide us with some written materials, um, and we may be able to get John Krebs, who works with the planning board, to go over those materials with us. And then what, what John Radigan said is that to the extent we have questions afterwards, we could write down some questions and maybe have a, you know, a conference with them by, by you know, video conference or something like that that would be less expensive for the town. So there are ways that we can get some help. But one of the things John said was that the board has the ability to close the hearing and get legal advice and then make a decision. Um, or suspend the hearing? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, close or suspend the hearing. I don't know quite how that works. Um, I'll try to learn some more about that because we do have an obligation to deliberate in public. Um, on the other hand, I hear what Paul and Deanna are saying, which is um, I, don't, I don't want decisions to be so rushed that we make a mistake because we, um, you know, yeah, we just overlook the facts. It's you know it's either in the best interest of the person that's had it, um, presented the petition or the letters and just making that decision 
that night without being able to absorb all the testimony. Right? There may be a number, although there may... In, there might be something cut and dry. In it yeah, there's some that are cut and dry, but yeah. you're right. There are some that are contentious. Yeah. Yeah. There may be some that are appear cut and dry and then turn out they yeah. are. So let me do some more homework on that. So for sure we have to deliberate in, in the public meeting. Yeah, so if we ask for a continuance, all right, so what's that mean? We can no longer talk. We can't do, we can't have a meeting. Well, no, meeting has to be public. No. So you ask for continuance while we seek legal advice. Yeah. All right. So needless to say it's nighttime. You're not gonna get any help. So it's gonna be the minimum probably in a week before you're gonna come back. And we can get legal advice in non-public session, but that's the only thing that we can have in non-public session. Okay, so we'll say that you've got one. You say this happens on a, on a Tuesday, all right? We get together on Thursday, we get legal advice. And I mean, honestly, you don't really think we're going to not bat questions around? Of course we are. We, have, we can't do it. At, a quorum of us cannot do it. And we need to be careful. We can't do it by email. We can't do no, it no, no. By I email. mean, if we were there and that attorney was, it would just gave us legal advice. Out of that, that's going to cause questions, most likely. Yeah. So if I asked a question to Andrea, I said, do, do, do you agree with what he said? You know, she, that's a question. Mm -hmm. So we get the legal advice. We probably have to go back into public session. We probably have to notice up the public a public session after our non-public session with the attorney mm -hmm. if we intend to further deliberate. I'll try to figure, I'll try to get some more information about how that works, Sonny. Those are all fair questions. Um, well, a jury doesn't deliberate in the courtroom with everybody there. Uh, y yeah, I understand that, but we're not a jury. Why'd you call us jurors? Yeah. He was using, <laughs> pulling the, uh, we he was pulling the, standards. Standards. the yes, standards, standards for a juror <laughs> and, and putting it for. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sorry, Charlie, I couldn't pass on that one. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I'm good with this. It's all good. Other questions? I think going to end real quickly on this is, I think you want to get that out of there, presenting a summary of the facts, mm -hmm. because isn't that a fertile basis for an appeal? In other words, well, the chairperson didn't didn't fairly did, summarize did, did, it, and I think it seems to me it's it's a it's a. Do you must say which view? Free free model, isn't it? I don't remember, but I agree with John. It seems I just on the point that it's really onerous for you to try to summarize what in discussion it can be pretty messy yeah. at the end of it. Maybe. Um, Seems open for a lot of interpretation within the hearing itself. <laughs> Oops, what, oh, you know what? I'm not, oh, it's this one. I've been making changes as we go along, so I'm not on. Okay, let me take a look. Um, the, I think the purpose of having the summary, so on, in, in su when I say Sunny's world, in in the world where we hear the case, we deliberate in public, and we make a decision, the, so the chairperson's summary is essentially the written decision of the board. And, okay. and so it, it has to hit all of the elements. And that's why there has to be these kind of backing notes and so forth. And we have to make findings in situations where the board I don't understand procedurally how you do this with the with the right to know law, public deliberations, and getting legal advice and writing things down. How you do all of that? Um, I know how you do it. I know how you do it when it's a single decision maker. I don't know how you do it when you're a, a board, zoning board of adjustment. But I'll try to figure that one out. Um, that might be a good question for, you, for that attorney. You know, exactly. Yeah. You know, just yeah. Ask I agree. How, good how do you do that? Exactly. Yeah. Because when you've del when you've delayed it and been able to flesh out a more coherent decision, that decision is going to have to go back around to the board, just the way these 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 rules went around. And you know, Paul says, "Why does it say this?" And Sonny says, "Why does it say this?" And John says, "Why does it say this?" And Andrew says, "Why does it say that?" 
I think we have to be able to have those conversations before we're locked into, yeah, you know, in a complex case, uh, this is what we what we what we what we mean to have said. Um, so, one way or another, I guess the board is obligated to, to be able to make its findings clear enough that the applicant and abutters can understand what decisions we made and why, and what facts we relied on to reach those decisions. Um, but how we do it in real time, you know, it does sound like it's like it can be a challenge. What you're saying, Charlie, is different, from, I see, from what is is in N. What you're saying, as I understand it, is the decision, the written decision, should reflect each side's contention. N is saying that strip is occurring before the here on the appeal is closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what doesn't make sense to mm -hmm. me. Uh -huh. I understand what you're saying, but this is saying. After, oh. you know, at some point, you've got to say, okay, you know, okay. assemblage. Well, you've got to do it. Uh, and yeah, that doesn't make you. sense to me. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm, okay. The light dawns on the level head. Okay. Other questions? So, 19. Yep. Um, notice a decision. Public inspection within five days as required. It won't be sent by to the applicant with certified mail. That's not in the RSA. That's not required. So I would scratch that. I mean, that we have it filed with the town clerk for public inspection within five days. I think it is part of 91A. I just looked at 91. I just looked at 763, issuance of decision. Yeah, no, take a look at, oh, I'm not connected to the internet here. Um, 91A colon 4, maybe? Which is the right to know law. It's the right to know law. <coughs> and it's um, public records available for inspection. And I think it's within five days. Five days is five. I don't think you have to send it by certified mail. Oh. I, with my ah, it's the certified mail? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So we believe the end will be sent? Yeah. Um, so the, the reasoning, before I delete that, I think part of the reason for sending it certified is so that um, uh, any requests for rehearing or any superior court actions can be dated from, I guess you would add a, one day to the, to the date that we put it in the mail. Uh -huh. But by sending it certified, we take away the argument that somehow it got, you know, the, it got lost in the mail, and we didn't really send it. Or the the applicant says, "No, I got it five five days after the hearing." That kind of thing. Um, if it has been our practice just to send a first class mail, and it hasn't been a problem for us, I'm, I'm okay. it hasn't really been our practice to send it in the mail. Oh, how do they get it? We're sort of notified that it's at the town. <laughs> Okay. And then they come and get it. And I think that's just a function of like getting the notice, getting it to be signed. There's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts. If we want to tighten that up as a procedure and have that become part of it, that's totally fine. Okay. I'm happy to take it out for now. Um, I don't understand the process well enough yet to to know how it's done. Um, I can imagine that the process of getting the decision, getting the vote, getting the signature, and getting it to the town clerk, there's some, that's, there's some processes involved in that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think just in a practical, I mean, half the time, I'm still like trying to get the fees and everything paid, so I'm in communication with the applicant so that information has just it's more casual, I guess. Is okay. Okay. Other questions, concerns? Um, do you want to put in here that notice shall be published in Foster's? And do you want to choose two dated locations? Or do you not need to? Just put it on the website? No, I'd say let's. There's some debate whether the website 
legally sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. post office and town hall are legally sufficient. We all, I always post down here too. Um, uh, is that 17 B? Yeah, so that's the last sentence. Notice shall be published. Oh. Notice uh, so of this decision. is notice of decision. So that has and never been, published. been published that I know of. Yeah, I didn't. Is that as is that required by law to be published in the newspaper? Not that I know of. Where does it say newspaper? That's, that's the last that's the last that's sentence. That's 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 that is unusual. Oh. Um and again, like the RSA that, that they're referring to here does make no mention. Yeah, I'm not aware that decisions have to be published. They do have to be available for public inspection. That would also impact our fees if you we had to go publish the decision. That's, yeah, that's yeah. another two hundred and fifty dollars you're adding to the fees. Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to take that out because, as I understand it, what's required is ninety one A. It's open for inspection. Yes. Uh, and we need to be able to reasonably provide it to the applicant. But if we have a mechanism that works, um, then I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Can I suggest we change, uh, notice shall also be given to the planning board, the board of selectmen can change that to, to the select board. Yep. Yeah, that's another outdated. So there's a motion for a rehearing filed that was never, when we, you and I have been on this only board, uh, Sonny, Sarah, is that then an additional fee the applicant has to charge, right? Because if there's a, a motion for a rehearing? rehearing? If it's not a continuance, yes. Okay. And that's addressed in our, our fee schedule, et cetera. Not specifically. I mean, it, it's like a whole, it's not. It's, it, the fee would just, okay. we would just refer them to like, your, but we would, we would be able to recoup money. the money for the rehearing fees, notice. Yeah, order. you'd have to pay. They don't pay a fee for the hearing. We as a town choose not to charge that. Sure. But they would have to pay all their new notice. Notice is what I'm at. I didn't yeah. say very, yeah. very well. That's a stepping stone to go to go into Superior Court. If you're going to go via, you're going to appeal the decision the board made. You go back in front of the board, and the people are going to tell you, I have nothing more to tell you. Nothing's changed. We need to be you. Next step is Superior Court. That's where they're going. Okay. I apologize. I'm missing another meeting, so I'm going to let them know I'm not going to make that other meeting. All right. Looks like that one. Okay. because I, I lost track because I was doing two things and not doing well. Um, is there a request to change something here? Uh, no, it was Medora 22, and I don't think, I was just asking Sarah. Oh, the rehearing. If, if you got to do the rehearing, you got to publish the new, I was just asking, making sure that we were going to be reimbursed for that, and she's saying that we have the ability to do that, and it's, well, it's not specifically listed, that it's generally it's sort of implied by schedule. All right. And if we can continue a hearing, do we have to provide notice ourselves? or No. Um, if you continue a hearing and you choose a date within the hearing, okay. then then that's sufficient. That's the notice. Yeah. Right? All right. Good. Other questions or comments? I just want to tell you. You as a chairman, though, how do you want to handle the business when trying to actually move away from what the particular item they want is, and I actually think we get into doing some of the planning board things. You might have seen that happen a few times, John. Um, I'll use bullets. They can make an exception mm -hmm. for making the profits. Um, we ended up discussing, no, I brought it up. Uh, I ended up by a suppression. <coughs> I'm sorry? Bias suppression. Okay. Yep. Um, I 
and then I brought in the community <coughs> work on Railroad Avenue to lead into their parking lot. And that was really not what the exception was for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how to, how to break away. Do we, do we just put on a set of bars <coughs> and look specifically at the one <coughs> Because when I asked our planning board member if they had been addressed, the answer was no. So therefore, now, as a concerned citizen, I asked a question. Yeah. And I actually denied them because I think that they should have taken up Railroad Avenue <coughs> out of their cost when they redid their parking lot because we added traffic. This is the responsibility as a zoning board to discuss. Any members that could affect the decision, is that not our role? Well, that, I, that's part of what I'm asking. I mean, really, he was coming in for a special exception, right. which was allowing him to put in the apartments. Correct. That's it. Right. That was really the total end of what he was wanting. So I understand. Do we, are we just to focus that's, on that? That's what I've asked the question. That's a good question. So if it, so we are pretty much, in the past, I'd say we've had all the freedom that we needed. Um, any question that wanted to be asked could be asked. I, I mean, within reason. I mean, you don't want to discuss the weather, but yeah. I mean, at that particular meeting, for some reason or another, we had uh, we had a selectman and a, and, a, and a planning board member, and then we had the planning board advisor there, which was kind of strange. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> what's your feeling on that? on both sides of that. Um, the planning board chair, I can remember that there were times where it felt like the planning board had made a decision that the ZBA hadn't always liked the, the decision and you know, the result of the, the planning board had reached. But you're identifying a different problem, which is the planning board appears to have granted, you approved a plan but failed to consider fire suppression? That was one of the questions they asked because mm -hmm. the, up on the sixth floor, they were going to have um, issue, yeah. um, apartments. So knowing that, that it had been some time since everything's worked, and I asked the question, nobody had the answer. So I asked Krebs, I said, what's the, mm -hmm. when is it going to get tested? I never got an answer. Mm -hmm. Just so I understand the question, so what, what I think I'm hearing you say, <coughs> I use that as a, as, a, as a, is so that the, the applicant comes in front of you for, uh, special exception. for a special exception on the issue of apartments, that you believe that fire suppression is an issue, although it's not noticed as one of the issues to be determined, in the what you're saying exceptions. is, can I as a board member bring up the issue of fire suppression, even though it's not it's got I mean, nothing to really do with a special exception, but during the discussion, this information is flowing, and questions come out of the information. I wish I don't know if I know if I have the answer to that. Well, to me, technically, it does come into effect because we are granting a special exception to allow apartments. So, what, do but, we not have a duty it, then it, to take that into it, consideration? But is it in reality our position? Right. Or does it go back to the planning board? So yes, they have their special exemption. Now you have to go back to the planning board. Is that the proper? I would think it would go back to the planning board. Definitely. And then they would need you to say, that okay. That yeah. nobody, nobody had even addressed it. Right. Yes. So I think. So in this case, it was one of them things that would just never existed. Okay. And the reason I brought it, the Brigham Avenue got brought up, is the, one of the families that lived there happens to have a handicapped son who's on the road with a wheelchair. Now, anybody knows Railroad Avenue, it's real narrow. I would think that if he is going to make this big improvement in this parking lot, that a planning board should have said, well, you're going to have to include improving Railroad Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's only, what, 150 feet long? Maybe 200? And then you're in that parking lot? Mm -hmm. Because those people, the, the, the parents, were there with that question. Although Railroad Avenue would be an off-site, that's a public road. Because mm -hmm. planning board, as, I, as board. I recall the process, the select board has a role to play in off-site improvements. Um, 
and so I'm not sure that the planning board necessarily has jurisdiction. So, Sonny, let me give that some thought. I think I think we stay in our we stay in our lane and decide the petition, but I think um, it be, like before there's a certificate of occupancy, there's going to be a um, uh, there's going to be a building inspection, and fire suppression is going to be part of the life safety code that gets applied at that stage. But that was part of the question that never nope. been answered. It when, should be. When will it get tested? So and we didn't know. So nobody in that in that room. But the board could make a recommendation that the planning, you know, that the applicant go back <coughs> to the planning board and to clarify these issues. Um, okay. well, there again, that's allowing us yeah. to deviate yeah. from. Brief. <coughs> you see what I'm trying to do? No, I, I see what I see what you're trying to ask. It sounds. I mean. Like, yeah. You, you want the questions asked as a board member, and then you want, then you can ask them as a resident. It's one of the reasons, um, if you look at, uh, it's, I've renumbered here, but joint meetings and hearings, one of the things the statute allows for that our town has never done, as far as I know, it, our statute allows the planning board and the zoning board of appeal, or a zoning board of adjustment, to meet jointly, periodically to kind of talk through some of these issues. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things if the, I would be, if, the, if this board is interested, I'd be interested in talking to the planning board chair. That's never happened. I know it's never happened. And there was a reason it didn't happen because I asked when I was planning board chair. But I think it's a good idea. I think that who, it lets us. the planning board chair? No, before that. Uh, uh, Pat, 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 Pat. Okay, I asked Pat. And because things were starting to come over to, to us, he says the, the guy before, and I can't remember his name, he do not live, live in town anymore. Mike Garrick. Yeah, yeah. Because it was me, Mike, and then Pat. I guess he didn't like the our Board of Appeals, so nothing really comes to the Board of Appeals. That's what I was told. Oh, I, see, I was always, see, this is how things get started in small towns. I was always told that Joe didn't want to have those meetings. <laughs> Because I, I kept saying to the... Oh, why don't I mean, I asked Pat. Pat. And Pat says okay. no. He says it was just a different... So it's, it's that different. would be the best thing that would happen because yeah. I think that both boards' education... Yeah. I, I think we're there mm -hmm. Because yeah. especially if, if something comes before the... Uh, yeah. Or the board, the planning board is really quick to give out waivers. And actually it should be us. You agree? I haven't thought that last part all the way through, but I like the idea of joint, uh, of joint, having joint board meetings because I think that you know, <coughs> attaching conditions could lead to a, a fertile ground for appeal. If, 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 if our issue to determine is only this, and we <coughs> say, oh, you can have it, but you have to go back and... On the other hand, on a life safety issue, like, you've got me more on the, on the sprinklers than you do on the off-site improvements for Railroad Avenue. Um, and I can't, I'm still thinking it through, Sonny, but somehow, so when you're talking about putting, you know, infants and small children in apartments on the sixth floor, um, the question about are there sprinklers, it feels like a dereliction of our duty not to ask the question. When it's a question of off-site improvements, it, although you did a nice job of tying it into the health and safety of this family that lives near, um, but it, that, that feels like a different kind of a planning issue that's less in our bailiwick. So, but let me, let me. However, though, what we have done is you could put them in, in as, I'm trying to think of what the term they used. Uh, to, when they went back to the planning board, the planning board would have to act on them. You know, whether they went for or against or said it's, it's uh, no big deal, at least it was a conditional. Uh, conditional approval? Uh, conditional something. It's in the yep. So at least the planning board would Conditional have to, right. right, they would have to at least receive These those. two or three conditions <laughs> need to be discussed and addressed by the planning board, but the rest stands provided these are addressed. If these don't get addressed, that's legal recourse because somebody thought the ball. Whether it was the applicant that never decided to bring them back up, because I don't know if our decisions and everything are going to go to the planning board. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah, one other reason for 
Yeah, often they, one of the things, Sarah, that we may want to uh, try to, to address from a, it, it may have been addressed since the time that I was board chair, but the, the, the planning board never found out what the ZBA decisions were back in the day. So adding a planning board chair as another. And vice versa, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think they do now just because of okay. me being on the board, the information is kind of sort of exhausted. And John. Mark, no, this, this, and this John. is the one. <coughs> I mean, he'll get squeezed and then he's got to open up. Okay. <laughs> um, we have gone for over an hour and a half. And I don't want to belabor your energy and good attention. Is there anything else we want to do tonight before I go back to the and do some more homework on the draft? No, I will point out that under amendments, it talks about how we adopt the <coughs> at a regular meeting. Good. Proposed and discussed at a prior meeting. Okay. Um, and. Let's see, I don't know how to ask this question, so I'll just ask it directly. Is the, would the board be willing to meet again for another workshop to address some training questions? I see heads on. Okay. Wonderful. Well, what the attorney, can you get them here at that time? I will talk with the um, select board and see what they're willing to pay for, um, see what we have in our budget. Um, John offered to provide some information to us for free, and so I'm thinking that we might go through that material and then use our session to have some more focused questions that were like we like this question about scope like the questions about managing the um, managing the how do you close a hearing and then deliberate and then have a and then have a written decision how do you manage that process under 91a um, we might be able to ask those questions and get a bigger bang for our buck so that he he knows what we're going to ask him and, and yeah so we we're still going to pay him to prepare to answer answer our questions but if you can pay him and, and get some questions answered then just end up in superior court right yes that's and, and i think um in fairness uh, the select board asked me to clarify with john before before asking him to, to come to, to to address us but they were very supportive of and very supportive of us getting some training so they want us to feel comfortable doing the work that, that the town has asked us to do. Um, so I'll, um, I'll try to work out a plan to get some training. Um, do we want to set a date for that meeting now? Is there a preferred evening for these meetings? Are they, ten, are they going to tend to be on the Monday on Mondays or? Um, <coughs> Mondays tend to work for me, but in the summertime, almost anything works. Is Monday bad for you, Andrea? Tuesdays are terrible for me. So I have other meetings. Okay. Um, yeah, are Wednesdays are bad, except in the summer. Where it's just my kids are annoying. Mondays and Thursdays are better. But then in the summer, it goes away because who goes off to camp? And I don't have to worry about that. That's fine. I can make it work. Okay. Um, if I'm a little late. <laughs> Indulgence. I work yes, I work late on Mondays, so and I have to travel a bit, so. Okay. Um, my two cents, I'd rather not be on Mondays because, as you know, courts tend to be heavy on Mondays and, and later and, and lighter later in the week. Okay. So I would almost prefer Thursday. Is better. <laughs> but I would, whatever the preference of the majority of the board is, is the way I'll go. How do Thursdays look? So after the after the so starting the twenty seventh, I have Wednesday nights. Our Wednesday nights. Good. Good. Although there's the twenty seventh, and then the next is the fourth. So we'd be looking at the eleventh of July. Was July 18th. I can't do the 18th. Still away. What about the 27th? Is that too of close? Of June? No, I don't think it's too close. The 27th of June? Yeah. What day is that? 
A Wednesday? I'm away. I'm away from Midwest. Oh. I'm away for a month. Okay. And I'm um, 22nd, 21st or 22nd of June, so in the middle of July. Ah. <clears throat> so just go ahead and do it, and I will just catch up with the notes. That's okay. Fine. And what? Maybe you and I can meet separately. That's fine. By that Sorry. point, I'll be able to, yes. I hope, explain uh -huh. some of it a little yeah. better. Okay. So you want to be stick with the 11th? The, the, 20... the 27th works, if that works for everybody. Or do we want to wait until the 11th? Do we want to do it sooner rather than later? Sounds like the 27th okay. works. Great. And this is to meet with John or just for us to reconvene? This is for us to reconvene okay. for a workshop session to um, re review materials, re Informational materials about planning board process. Or, I'm sorry, zoning board of adjustment process. Can we be here again? I'm happy to have it here. You don't mind? Mm -mm. Okay. Sunny, now that you've been here, <laughs> okay. it's a great look at me. It's 7 p.m. or 6 to 7 p.m. the time? Is 7 p.m. Yeah. the best time? Yeah, it's great. Okay. I'm going to go to Scarfie's. I'm pretty sure we'll find a way. All right. Then you're going to slide the next door. Oh, yeah, that'd be all the way that we got it. it. Water here. <laughs> Thank you for the water. Yeah, yeah. So, so I have this. Is this anything? All right. That's it. That's the one. This is, okay, because he was referring to this something is a, else. It's the Office of Environmental uh, or Energy and Planning. The OEP. Okay, yeah. I thought oh. he was saying the IEP. No, I kept OSI. saying OSI. OSI. And, and I yeah. thought, I don't, I'm. Well, that's <laughs> that's just the Office of Administrative Services is what I thought you were trying to I think that's strategic initiatives, I think. But the so this OEP is the handbook for yeah. the ZBA. And, and all the ZBA stuff is on their website. And it hasn't changed since you, Ron gave me this. That's why I keep saying OSI. Because it's now called it, it's OSI. It's now the Office of Strategic Initiatives. Okay. Yeah. So um, wow. they updated it to end of 2017. Okay. So I'll have to go on. What's the latest copy we should be using now? This is the one that I got. That's of the ordinance? Yeah, it's the ordinance. That is probably the latest one. Did, or did you just get that one? There's one, there's one that just went to print. Okay, this is March of 2011. So, <laughs> oh, you can get you a new one, an updated one. Really? Yeah. Good. That's so what it says. You you I can email, email it to you. No, the paper you. Right. Yeah. What do I? I just want to see it. That's, that's right. what I have. Wants to see. Yeah. No, you have the same thing that I have. Yeah. It's, it's, old. Old. it's old. It's old. Yeah, it is old. It's this, old. This is Are you adjourning? Is this yes. We are adjourned. So,